Couch and Ball doing our football podcast for this week, and I've got my my dream team here in the studio today: Chris van Dijk van der Merwe, Henny the casual fan van der Merwe, and Linda Loof. Oh no, sorry, Linda, the original Linda Loof, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> and um, call me Correct. Igor Di- Igor Dino. On the weekends, that's and, what they and, call me. And selfish Salah on Monday <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's um, <coughs> it's better than being labelled as the chip promoting of the team, as as Chris is. <laughs> but um, I guess you can't can't always win. But yeah, so um, guys, how was your how was your sporting weekends? Did we did we check check out some like uh, foodie? Yo, Igor, uh, it was a very nice weekend. But um, again, a uh, bit disappointed in Unai Emery's team selection. Uh, but we'll get to that later. But otherwise, it was a good weekend, the parts of it I can remember. No, I think being an Arsenal or Tottenham fan at the moment um, is like taking a chick home and then when she pulls down her pants, there's a mash of schlong looking right, <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> Everything started out so promisingly and, 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 and well. And then all of a sudden... Um, Life takes a very dark turn. And then Chris, Henny, um, you guys weren't, you guys didn't go to Standard Town. Um, you guys looked a bit uh, bruised on Sunday morning. Well, Igor, yes, we had a huge party or a huge prior Saturday night. And unfortunately, I had to go to work on Sunday morning, 7 o'clock. So, um, yeah, when I woke up, I literally couldn't stop crying. <laughs> literally. <laughs> but yeah, that's life, man. Keeps our feet on the ground. <laughs> Eyes on the stars, feet on the ground. <laughs> Play for the name on the front and we'll remember the name on the back. <laughs> Lekker. Yeah. And any, um, I can see you didn't get any exercise this weekend. Um, what did you do? Well, Igor, yes, I was a bit bruised on Sunday morning, but um, very nice weekend. Um, Man United drew, so that was a that was a very nice thing. Um, England, uh, uh, Ben Stokes didn't play this weekend, so no fucking massive Sky Sports outbursts. So, yeah, so very promising, nice weekend. Okay, so let's kick it off um, with the first game that we had on the weekend, and all of us had the privilege of watching um, Man United take the field again. Uh, And they drew one all against Southampton after Southampton got a red card in the 73rd minute. So, um, Linda, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this. I'm gonna read the United midfield, and then you tell me um, if this is a good enough midfield to compete for Europa League. So we're starting with Rashford up top, and then um, as our creative midfielder, we've got Juan Mata, who um, who got recently got diagnosed with arthritis. <laughs> On the left, we've got Daniel James, um, who's continued his good goal scoring record. <coughs> I think he's got three, two or three now. Three. Three. Yeah, so he, he's got um, half the goals that he scored last year for Leeds. <coughs> he's already got half the goals that he scored last year for Leeds, which was eight in about 40 appearances. And then we've got <laughs> uh, Pereira on the right wing, McTominay um, uh, on the left pivot, and Pogba on the right pivot. Linda, what do you make of that midfield as as individuals? Um, well, Igor, as individuals, except for Pogba, um, the rest of them who, uh, would uh, be in a relegation scrap uh, from from February onwards. <coughs> I r- I really do think um, United had a disgusting transfer window. Um, last season, towards the end of the season, when we when they won that terrible run, um, I remember Scholzer had one interview where he said uh, he is he is going to be successful at United, and there are some players here that won't be part of it. And he got rid of their only goal scorer in Lukaku, and he bought 
Maguire and Juan Bissaka. And that is basically what he did. And trusting guys like McTominay and... Daniel James. Who's, who's, yeah, well, well, Daniel James is one for the future. <laughs> He's one for the future. Like Lingard. Let, like <laughs> Lingard and, who's the, uh, and Pereira. I mean, there is no way you are competing. I mean, Leicester. Leicester at this moment has a better midfield than Man United. And I just think that sums up where they are. I think there's bigger problems at United than the team. I, I can't imagine that going into the transfer window, um, that is what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer envisioned for his his midfield for this season. I think, I don't know what's going on. I think maybe partly um, because of their wage structure, uh, with Sanchez getting 480000 a week, I mean, that just screws everything up because now you have to pay Rashford 300,000 or 250,000 a week and he's not worth half that. So I think there's big problems at United. I mean, even if you look at that back four, when you have to play Ashley Young at left back, um, then you know there's not there's not much hope. And then Chris as well, um, Southampton got a red card. Kevin Dance are getting a red card in the 73rd minute. And you would expect the United of all to just, you know, quite comfortably absolutely take teams apart when they when they get a red card with 17 probably 20 minutes to play uh, injury time included and then they they just didn't they just uh, stood off and let let Southampton close out the game reasonably comfortably well you know, if you think about it they they don't have lit- literally they don't have the the quality um to to see out games um um, if you look at the team, like we just said, it, it, it's a painfully, painfully average team. And this is Man United. We're talking about Man United, the club that spent the second most money in Europe over, over the last five years. So they are basically competing with Man City, with Real Madrid, with Barcelona, money-wise. And they feel, feel that this this team um, over the weekend. So they've got massive, massive, massive problems. Um so, like we predicted in the beginning of the of the season, we I, I predicted Arsenal to finish fourth, and literally, I cannot see them not finishing fourth uh, because Man United and Chelsea are going to be terrible this well, season. Yeah, maybe Leicester. Maybe Leicester. Mm. And then, um, so of course, then <coughs> that means United has picked up uh, four points, five points in four games. Which is, if you're going to tr- average one point a game, you're not going to end up at the right end of the of the table, you know, as math and just common sense suggests. But, uh, but if, w- just quickly, that has been their form over the last 16 games. <laughs> I think 16 games, three wins, three draws and 10 losses. That is... Yeah. That is Worse than they've, relegation. They've, they've made twelve or thirteen points in their last sixteen games. If you go back to last season, so uh, I really, I, I really, I think there's huge problems at United. I don't think, I mean, with Le- if Leicester uh, keeps on going like they are now, and and we we expect um, Wolves to improve, um, and even teams like Everton and West Ham that have started the season quite well. I mean, United are, are going to be battling for sixth place with those teams. Uh, that is where they are at the moment. And um, and uh, honestly, I don't see signs uh, while watching the game. I d- I don't see signs of it improving very quickly. Yeah, I think um, you can you can do a lot with a team with like a super solid defense and good defense and nothing else. Or you can do a lot with a team with a good midfield and nothing else, and a team with a good attack and nothing else. But United literally have nothing. You don't look at that team sheet and say like, mm. yo, these are four really good defenders that you can, <coughs> nobody's going to score against them. They can play the ball out well from the back. You don't look at the middle and go like, oh, yeah, these are the guys I want to keep possession 90 p- for 90% of the game and score a couple of goals here and there. And when you look at that attack, that attack's not going to score. Um, <coughs> none of them is going to get within 20 goals this season. I can't see that happening. Um, and that's, uh, that, that is if... That is the state of the affairs without any long-term injuries this season. If someone like Maguire 
when Lindelof gets injured, or if Pogba gets injured, if, if Martial remains injured, <laughs> they're absolutely <laughs> fucked. <laughs> fucked. But in any case... Um, <coughs> but a good point for Southampton. But yeah, yeah, solid point for Southampton. Um, they might ag- yet again <coughs> not get relegated this season. Um, I think... Um, everything changed for Southampton when they when they sacked Claude Puel two seasons ago after in, um, finishing sixth, and then they wanted a manager that can take them to new heights. And then the the following season they ended sixteenth. But um, <laughs> you win some, you lose some, I guess. <coughs> and then next, um, Chelsea um, had another bitterly average game against the mighty Sheffield United, and letting in two goals against Sheffield. Um, and that match finishing, obviously, then 2-2. Two, two. So, Henny, um, as a Chelsea fan, or as a, uh, sorry, as a fan of football in general, um, or the team that Ronaldo as, plays. As a Ronaldo <laughs> fan, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> but it, uh, it seems as if um, Tammy Abraham's hitting form as well. He got two goals. Um, Kurt Zuma got on the score sheet as well. <laughs> and for the wrong team, unfortunately. Uh, but that that does happen. Um, but if if we're gonna be honest, I think uh, Chelsea are looking a bit better than Manchester United so far. I mean, they come close to losing the against um, lesser teams, but at least they don't. I'm not drawing now, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is something to say about that? Um. Yes, you go. Uh, again, Chelsea, like Man United, I think was a team with a lot of holes in it. Um, not the good kind, not glory holes. <laughs> and they've got big problems as well. Not big problems. No. Yeah. Just big problems. I think the sad thing for Man United and Chelsea is um, they are fighting to get into that top four to actually close the gap on the top two, or actually the top three the, the last couple of years. And they have managers like Frank Lampard and Lonnie Gola Solskjaer when the people have on the top have Pochettino, um, Pochettino, Klopp, and Guardiola. I think you have to be realistic. Um, the, if you look at their team sheets, they are far behind. And even in a rebuild, do you really want to rebuild with a, a coach like like Solskjaer and and Lampard? Um, again, like Chris said, I don't inv- I don't see Chelsea finishing top four. Uh, they squandered a lead again. Um, it's um, that has been the story of the season. They were hit against Leicester as well at home, and they squandered the lead to draw, drop points. I think it just shows that apart from Colo Kante, they also lack a lot of leadership. And the same with Man United. Also, a hit in a couple of their games, and the teams come back against them, and they just have no reply. I think it speaks a lot to the lack of leadership in the team, the lack of experience. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and La- Frank Lampard are all for young British talent, developing the youth. But sometimes you have to be honest with yourself and say, we need a couple of leaders in there, people with experience, people that know how to close out games. And both those teams, for me, are lacking in that department. Yeah, Just to uh, add on that, if you, if you start with Timori and Kurt Zuma at the back, you're going you're, you're gonna to concede goals. So their the defense this season is going to be they down for I, I believe um, and but they I are really going to struggle but I don't know like if, if I looked at the team sheet and they had Andreas Christensen at the, on the bench um, as well as Marcus Alonso which to me is criminal I'm not a big Alonso fan because he, he scored I think two winners in the last two seasons against Tottenham um, but when you why not why not play with Andreas Christensen that played the whole of last season for Chelsea and is I mean, he's no, he's no, he's no Toby Alderweireld, but um, he's he's a uh, right proper bit more decent than than Fikayo Tomori. Yes, we are just, 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 well, and yeah. just, is this another example of just bad team selection? I think at the moment Chelsea's got four centre backs, um, one being injured in Rudiger, and the and yeah, and then the remaining Which three. Which is probably the best one. Who were in the squad? Yeah. We were in the squad over the weekend. Um, I think he, he he's rotating his, his centre-backs and experimenting with Timori, giving his youth players a chance, like he did with um, Mason Mount, like he did with... Yeah, who's the 16-year-old who came on 
who, were, who was absolutely shocking when he came on, but whatever. So I think he's, he's experimenting, and that's the kind of thing you're going to see. You're going to concede two goals at home against Sheffield United if you play these type of players. So um, Emerson starting in front of Alonso, I, I can... I can deal with that because he's actually on good form at the moment. So, so I don't have an issue with that. But yeah, uh, uh, trouble, trouble sometimes for Chelsea. But for me, two 0 up at half time yeah, against a team out. against a team who has just been promoted to the Premier League at home. I mean, and I think really, a team like Chelsea should. Well, maybe if Sheffield score, but. At least you you should be able to see that out. Um, but <coughs> none of these Sheffield players have played in a Sheffield shirt in the Premier League before. I can I'm not sure when, but I've, since I started watching football in like 2007 or something, Sheffield wasn't in the Premier League mix at all. So I think um, poor game management from Chelsea, poor leadership, um, with with without Kante there, and. You would expect them to, to see out this game and then they consider just off the off time. But in any case, there were, there were other games as well this weekend. So next up, uh, Man City, another pretty convincing display. Clocking Brighton uh, 4-0 um, at, the, at the Etihad. Just another standard day out. De Bruyne scoring in the second minute. Aguero scoring twice in 10 minutes. And then Bernardo Silva rounding out the day in the 79th minute. Um, and yeah, just another pretty breezy, easy day out for for City. Yeah, for me the scary thing about this game is Brighton actually played quite well. <laughs> they, they actually did. They had a couple of good chances. They created a few chances. But, <sighs> yo, no, City is just too good. <laughs> when you have Bernardo Silva on the bench and Mares on the bench, and and Mares wasn't on the on the bench this this weekend because um, he started, well, well, who but he got replaced by Bernardo Silva, but, who then came on and scored a goal. Yeah, but who was the rest of the bench? <laughs> Bernardo <laughs> this, Silva. This is what, this is what I was going to say. Is scary to me. So they Fernandinho Gundogan. They brought a Fernandinho. Jal Concello. I mean, and they have come Gundogan, on. and they've got Jal Concello on the bench. With full Foden, who's got a full season of Premier League experience, and Angelino, who's the new signing from, um, I think it's somewhere, somewhere in the Netherlands this season, and then Claudio Bravo. I mean, this bench um, would be a pretty decent, um, pretty decent, um, repeat pretty decent players in any of the other top f- four teams. Mind you, not um, n- n- not minding the rest of the of, of the Premier League at all. That is what I find particularly scary is that they have such quality on the bench. I mean, just just <coughs> compare this midfield to United's <laughs> midfield: De Bruyne, Rodri, and David Silva. <laughs> <laughs> and then with with Mares, Sterling, and Aguero up front. I mean, yeah. And a shout out to Kevin De Bruyne who who got his fiftieth. Premier League assist, the quickest in Premier League history, 120 t- 123 games, 18 games um, faster than Mesut Ozil, so that's quite an achievement. So I'm expecting a big season from him this year. Yeah, if he can, I think if he can remain injury free, he's definitely going to lead. He might even lead the assist stats in Europe. Um, mm. I think this is his third assist, his fourth game, or, or close to thereabouts, and he scored a goal as well. No, it's absolutely scary. And what I what I really like that City's done. Because um, Chelsea and United didn't manage to do it. Is they spend a lot of money, but they spend a lot of money on exactly the right players that do perform. How many times have we seen that United or Chelsea splashes, you know, upwards of sixty million on a player, and it turns out to be a total flop? I mean, Murata comes to mind. Um, Fred comes to mind. Who they Sanchez. Paid Fifty-four Sanchez, who they paid a lot of money. Di Maria. For. Di Maria, who they played a lot before Memphis. Zlatan, Zlatan, Valcao. Zlatan was good. Memphis, Memphis the Depay. <laughs> but it's Zlatan. <laughs> so the thing the about lion. City is they, they spend a lot of money fair, but, they, but they, they're but they spending money on on 50 million rated players. 
15, 16 million. They they don't have this ridiculous signing of 150 or 180 or 120 watts and whatnot. It's these up and coming 22, 23 year olds who's looking good in, um, across Europe and they pay decent money for them. And I think Pep Guardiola just improves them a lot. And this is why we're seeing literally the best squad in Europe now performing and setting stats and records like never before. Yeah, I think if we're going to do this uh, Premier League podcast, the, the thing we're not going to chat about the most is not, I don't think we're gonna, there's going to be too much of a hiccup with City's league form. That's not what City's goal is going to be because I think we're going to see three, four nulls every weekend almost. Um, I, could, I, I would completely believe it that City could smash Arsenal, Tottenham, um, Chelsea and United by at least three goals at home. Um, Yes. Like that's that's no, that's not me saying an outrageous thing. Um, the real challenge is going to come in the in the in the Champions League definitely. Um, if they can keep their cool, their cool there. And then next up, um, City beat Bournemouth three uh, one. Impressive display. West Ham City. Um, Bournemouth. Near. Leicester City beat Bournemouth. Leicester yeah. City. Yeah. Leicester City beat. Um, beat Bournemouth three one. Um, is Leicester City turning into the only city in the Premier League <laughs> after <laughs> Manchester City? <coughs> no, that's no, that's what I mean. Is do you, are we going to refer to Manchester City now as Man City and to Leicester as just City? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like people refer to to Real Madrid as Real and to Atletico as Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> But in any mm-hmm. case, uh, an, an impressive display by them. Um, genuine, genuine, the top four contenders yeah. this, this yeah. season. I totally agree. I'm, I'm really impressed with, with Leicester. Um, I think they have a really good midfield and a decent defence. Uh, even after losing Maguire, um, not the best. But if you look at if you look at the state of the other teams challenging for top four. Um, it, they can easily go on a good run and uh, and and s- s- yeah, eclipse someone to that fourth spot. Um, yeah, I think Brendan Rodgers has made a huge difference, especially to to Jamie Vardy because he struggled uh, last season um, before Rod uh, before Brendan Rodgers c- came, and Brendan Ro- Rodgers has just given him the freedom. To run for ninety minutes wherever he wants to, and just score goals, uh, which is what he does best. So, um, yeah, I really think Leicester are genuine, genuine fourth top four com- I think contenders. You guys are absolutely full of shit. Absolutely full of shit. This is their second win in four games. They got six points from four games. They drew against against Wolves on the opening day, and they they, they drew against Chelsea, and they beat Sheffield. 2-1 at home. That to me doesn't scream. Oh, they have eight points from, from four games and they're in third pl- place. Oh, eight yeah. points. Sorry, I didn't count the, count the draws. Um, so but yeah, I mean, they've played, they've, they've played Bournemouth, Sheffield and Wolves. The only um, sort of traditional difficult team they've played yet is Chelsea. They've arguably haven't played a team in the... in the um, Man United? In the top, in the top seven or... Top and Man seven United? Eight. Who's United, United played? played? Chelsea. Crystal Newcastle. Palace. No, I haven't played United yet. Where they play United? No, 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 we're talking about who has United played. Yeah, uh, they played Chelsea. Chelsea. Played. Who's Chelsea played? Sheffield Wednesday, United, <laughs> who, who was basically on the same level as Sheffield Wednesday. No, I think, I think it's no. not like the other teams have uh, have played against good good opposition and they've and they've actually did done no, badly. But, no, but listen, remember, I think um, just uh, tipping them as top four contenders ahead of both Arsenal and and Tottenham is a bit. But premature. Not tipping them, just saying they have uh, actually they have a chance. Yeah, yeah. Tottenham got there right now. Who's going to Leicester in fear there right now? But yeah, I don't. Yo, I don't know. I don't. I think Leicester City are, are close to someone like Everton or close to someone like Wolves. Maybe I can't. I don't think they have that much depth in their squad to to really seriously compete for for top four. Um, if they're going to pick up injuries, their squad is going to be. Stretch terribly thin um, when they have to compete with, uh, against someone like Everton, who's spent 200 mil. There's a lot more depth there um, as the season progresses. If we can chat about this again, if they maybe hold City to a draw at home or 
nobody's going to hold City to a draw at home. Yeah, not even not, not even Tottenham. Yeah, no one's. G- <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only away. <laughs> If, if they beat someone they pl- like Arsenal, next game. Tottenham, City or Liverpool, then we can chat and be like, okay, cool. Their next game. The, these after guys the may, might, might make champions. Their next game after the international break is United. United. At Old Trafford. Yeah. Yes. And I'm actually backing them to win that. Yeah. The way United are playing, I'm backing them to win that. Well, I would back literally anyone except the teams that didn't get relegated last season against United li- anyway. Yeah, but that's exactly what we're saying. Chelsea and United are so bad, and yeah. Arsenal's defence is absolutely atrocious. So it might happen that Leicester can challenge for that fourth spot. Mm. I just think let's 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 let the Premier League sink in a bit, and then then we can chat about this further. Th- further, but anyway, Leicester winning, beating Bournemouth three-one. Um, Jamie Vardy scoring scoring twice, and. Um, I don't know this. This for me, I was ex- really expecting a lot more from Bournemouth. Um, of they didn't, um, of the of the last season, um, didn't. The, I know that they didn't have the best to the to ends to their season. Yeah. I was expecting a lot more from Bournemouth. Um, Fraser hasn't done well um, to the start of the season. Hasn't been the assist king that he was. Um, last season, so I don't know. They, for me, they're pretty disappointing. Then they, for me, they they're starting to to galvanize towards the the latter end of the table into the bottom ten, ten, which is a bit dis- uh, disappointing for me. But yeah, Leicester's showing showing good form, and then the next couple of games will will tell all, I guess. Um, and then some of the other games as well. Crystal Palace beating Aston Villa one 0 um, I don't think, really think that's a game to write home about. Aston Villa also picking up a red card. Newcastle and Watford drawing uh, or d- battling it out to a one all draw. West Ham and Norwich City. West Ham, West Ham could beating Norwich City 2 0. What do you think about West Ham's prospects? They have they've they haven't done too poorly thus too poorly thus far. They've got a reasonably um, settled settled squad that's been. Uh, more or less the same the the, the last season or so. Um, they well they, they lost five 0 against City, but I mean, who hasn't? Who hasn't? Who hasn't? Um, and this is the second win, second win on the trot. Beat what the three one away last season. So seven um, seven points from from their first four games. Not bad. Maybe maybe ch- challenging for Europa League. Yeah, I think they. Um in that pool, almost uh, with with Everton and Wolves. and Wolves and Leicester, um, they saw they made a really good signing. Their new striker, I think, oh, what is um, Haller or something like that? Yeah, Sebastian Haller. <coughs> he's a really he's a really good striker. He's a really good goal scorer. Um, so he'll make a big difference because that was a big problem for them last season, playing with with Chicharito up front, um, who wasn't really firing on all cylinders so um it was a really good signing for them and again they have actually <coughs> a quite decent midfield uh in Yarmolenko, Noble, Lanzini and Felipe Anderson. Mm, Declan Rice as well that's um and guys that that have been along uh, that that have been in that setup for for quite some time. I mean Diop and Ogbonna has played since forever. So a really really settled settled team. Yeah, and I also really rate um, Pellegrini as a as a manager. I think um, he's a really good manager. So I expect them to finish around to challenge United for that seventh spot. And then on to someone who's not going to challenge United for that second spot. Liverpool beat Burnley 3-0 um, away playing at... At Burnley, and I guess um, this is this is this is becoming a trend. Um, City and Liverpool smacking smacking people three 0 four 0 left, right, and centre, um, closing games out pretty easily, um, and making making the league look like a bit of a joke, really. Yeah, that is also a bit scary because <coughs> if uh, like Burnley, if you go and play Burnley away, that's not a fixture. That you're really looking forward okay. to, and I actually, oh. ex- especially the way um, Burnley started the season started quite well. Um, you expect it to be a 
quite a tricky game um and yet it was so easy um i mean they should have scored five or six maybe if salah wasn't so sh- selfish like Igor uh, in five aside. Yeah, like <laughs> Igor in five aside. But um, yeah, a really easy game again for Liverpool. Comfortable. And yeah, like we said last week, I can't see any of those two teams losing to to anyone except each other. For me, I think, I think I'm looking at the squad now and I think the only thing that I think City, I think Liverpool are tactically better than, than City. Because Jurgen Klopp has done a lot more, has done a lot more with with players of lesser quality. Um, I mean, but I think the I think the difference is going to be in the squad depth. Liverpool are still two big injuries away from losing a lot of goals or letting a lot of goals in, and for City it's not necessarily the case. Um, I mean, if someone in the midfield gets injured for Liverpool, they're looking at starting someone like Ch- Chamberlain, Lalana, or. Milner or, or Shakiri, and if if Van Dijk gets injured, they're starting with Matip and and Gomez, which is not at the same level at uh, as their City counterparts. So I think that might be the difference as the as the season progresses. But we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. And then just before we we get to the big talking point, Everton beating Wolves three two after Wolves got a red card, three red cards this this week. People are fucking each other up. Um, but yeah, Everton... Oh, that was really disappointing. Willy Bowley in the 95th minute. <laughs> he fucked up my whole fantasy league. <laughs> with that. <laughs> I, was, I was really angry. But yeah, Everton, Everton lo- not, not looking that bad. Bounce back well from the shocking loss I think it, against Aston Villa uh, the week or whatever ago um, and Alex I will be doing for Everton what he could never do for Tot- for Arsenal and that is score goals and he's got one yeah I just think he was never given the chance at <laughs> Arsenal <laughs> <laughs> I think being the deputy for, for, for Obama Young on so many occasions uh, um, yeah. and then Richarlison um, doing his fifty million uh, pound price tag justice and and chipping in, chipping in with two. So I think I think if we're gonna have to group it together, um, the Europa League places are are up to Chelsea, United, Wolves, Everton, Leicester City, West Ham, and Arsenal. <laughs> I don't know. I think Arsenal is still in the challenge for top. I think Arsenal are more leading to the challenge for top four than for Europa League. And West Ham are more looking like finishing mid table than challenging for Europa League. But I think those are the are the teams that are going to. I think that's going to be the most interesting football this season because I think one and two is all has been wrapped up mm. in yeah. in the in the first week. But then, um, for everyone who don't know, I'm a massive Spurs fan and Lynn is a massive Arsenal fan. Um, so this is going to might get pretty heated and um, beware of foul language because they will be some foul language. So uh, Tottenham and Arsenal drew 2-2 at the mighty Emirates Stadium um, with all 12 fans sitting there and watching. So Linda, let fall. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was full, but I just like insinuating that Arsenal is a shitty club. Who liked Tottenham's trophy cabinet? <laughs> you <or> me out. <laughs> Don't worry, you at least won the Audi Cup this There's year. No need to be mean. Pochettino's first trophy, uh, the you Audi guys, Cup. You guys, we okay, so Linda, talk us through what was going through the mind of Unai Emery selecting three holding midfielders um, without any linking um, link, linking midfielder to start the game, putting Ceballos on the bench. <laughs> Well, and, <laughs> well, and still well, getting a result. <laughs> with Socrates for Palapalopoulos <laughs> and David Luiz as your centre-backs, I also start with three defensive <laughs> midfielders. <laughs> <laughs> Igor? Um, yo. Okay. Finally, we, we saw the front three that we've been wanting to see from the start of the season. Lacazette, Aubameyang and Pepe starting together. And then you put no one behind them <laughs> to give them the ball. Like Diti said, it's like buying a Ferrari. 
and not putting any petrol in it. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> I mean, you th- <laughs> there was the most... When I saw the team selection, I was... I was so frustrated because, I mean, you put you can put Ozil behind them, you can put Ceballos behind them, you can, you uh, and behind. you will lock behind <laughs> anyone, Reese Nelson, Mkhitaryan, <laughs> anyone. Then you pu- put Jacques. Granite fucking Jacka, <laughs> and, and I Ozil. hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Literally, I've been saying this for the last three years. The he is the worst Nicholas. player on that Arsenal team. I don't know what he does. He's not a defensive midfielder because he can't defend. We saw that with his perfectly timed sliding tackle in the box. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, thought, <laughs> I thought Son thought this is the best moment of my life. I gave away a shitty pass. And I think Arsenal actually turned over possession with that pass that Son gave. Oh, and here comes here comes Xhaka <laughs> giving away the penalty after Arsenal got the turnover ball. I literally I couldn't believe what I was seeing, and you saw it coming from <laughs> from <laughs> ten yards out. He was sprinting towards Son, and you could see he was about to dive in there. And even the first goal as well, David Luiz, terrible defending. Socrates, terrible defending. Burnt Leno. Terrible goalkeeping. <laughs> we basically gave Tottenham two goals and then decided in the second half maybe we should bring a, a attacking midfielder on. Uh, and what happened? We dominated the second half. Um, so, I was, yeah, it was just a weird team selection for me. I can uh, sort of understand, um, <laughs> like Chris said, if you're defending with David Luiz and Socrates, you probably want to play three defensive midfielders. But then you would want three defensive mid- midfielders who can defend? <laughs> um, not well, yeah. Well, so well, to, 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 Torreira can defend. Like I would have understood playing Torreira and then not playing the other two and just playing two other people. Um, because <laughs> I don't know what. I th- I still think Emery thinks we we he wants to win games one nil or something or two nil. He wants to keep a clean sheet, and there's no way. There's no way we are going to keep more than four clean sheets this whole season, and maybe. But, 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 but Linda, if you if you if you look at Arsenal's problems the last ten years, literally, nee, they need a defender. We've been now. screaming no, this you, you guys for are looking ten for years. Now, buy a centre back. Now after this, after the transfer window, you spend seventy two million on Pepe, which is a good play. I'm not going to take that away from him. But literally, why don't you spend seventy two million on a centre back? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> because Gary Maguire was worth ninety. <laughs> but 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 also also when at looking at this team, now I get that. If if you if you pay seventy two million for a defender, you get Mustafi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've got two seventy more defenders in our team. I think I, I think it's actually no, sad. I really when think, I think um, about the stalwarts of Arsenal's defense. Of uh, the last decade and a half or so, I think of people like Koscielny and Per Mertesacker <laughs> and, and Mustafi. But and it's, um, it's been going on for like 10 seasons. But anyone with a soccer brain can see the obvious, <laughs> the obvious yeah. downfall in their team or in the system. There, this this, uh, this no. maybe has been the difference between Tottenham and Arsenal because we saw, oh fuck, our defenders are Matthew Dawson and Yunus Kabul. <laughs> And Benoit Asawi Kotto and Carl Norton. And then what did we do? We bought all the barrels in Vertongen. And we played Rose. We bought a backup for Rose. We bought we bought um, Carl Walker. And we bought a backup for Carl Walker. That's, that's, how, that's how you buy players, Linda. But I really think uh, we're about to see the best of Rob Holding and Callum <laughs> Chambers this season. Well, we're going to have to because they're going to be playing with almost Yeah, they're going to start season. every game. Um, I can just see a back three with David Lewis, Callum Chambers, and Rob Holding. Oh, I will, I will slit my throat. I but think, no, yeah. I think that, that would I think that would actually give Austin Wenger a, a wet dream. Seeing that he would love that all, oh, of, all but, of his boys, but, but that back young up and coming British talent, like Callum it's Chambers gonna, and it's Rob gonna Holding. change the whole Premier League. I think if we get Man City at the right time with that back three. I think City wins it on goal difference. And even now, like, Arsenal lost their most consistent play in Nacho Monreal. <laughs> <laughs> so that's quite a big loss for you guys. <laughs> no, but we bought... Kolasinac is not bad. 
yeah, actually, yeah, and we bought yeah, Kieran yeah, Tierney, yeah, so that's the, I don't really mind. He's not. It won't make that big of a difference. But yeah, like I said, just no. I I couldn't understand the team selection, and I, like Chris said, can't understand why you don't just pay fifty million for a defender and just improve it slightly. But what I what I also would just like to add, like tactically, the Arsenal setup, like uh, th- the individuals, some of them are shit. But I mean, you can't change that. But just the setup tactically, because. If I, I'm not, I'm not a, a, an A levels manager, but tactically for me, I want a, a tackling CDM, someone like Torreira, someone like Fernandinho, someone like um, Kante, whatever. Then you need a distributor, and you need someone that can take up the ball. And going Dozy, um, some of the times he did take the ball up, but he's, we saw he, I think he gave away five or six or seven straight passes in the first half alone. He's not a distributor, but he takes the ball into the final third well. And then you've got Jaka. That's neither of these things. It's like having Harry Wings in your team as well. He can get the ball from the centre back, pass it back to the centre back, <laughs> go into a different position, get it from the centre back again, and give it give it to, to one of the full backs to start an attack. And then Yo, when I see Granit Jaka, I immediately think of JP Dumini. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> because he can't spin. <laughs> and he can't bat. I don't know why he's in the team. He can't create. He can't defend. But I um, don't see it. For for me, I'm I'm starting. Uh, if if we're gonna look at the Arsenal set, I think actually this is the 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 better the best formation or the best individuals that we've started. Ericsson made a comeback, and what did you know? He fucking scored a goal. Imagine yeah, that. Yeah, Bernd Leno gave him a goal. Storing, storing you. Yeah, but well, I think that that will actually go down as an assist for Leno. I don't think he really gave it to him, but it was a, it was a pretty good um, pass with the hands. But Almost as case, good as the assist I gave you. Didn't it, I? Just, <laughs> it, it just it just it just shows you that if you start Ericsson, he's going to create and he scored a goal. Um, I was I was pretty upset that Lamela was starting again. Um, it, he started on, on the wing this time. I don't know why we bought we paid fifty million for Lasalsa and we keep putting him on the bench. Well, Lasalsa is a very versatile player. He has played CDM before, um, defensive midfielder before. He has played bo- he has played box to box roles. He has played on the wing. He has played in centre midfield. Um, but still, we're, we're playing Harry Winks, which t- to me does not bring a lot to this team. He's also not a tackler. That was Sissoko's job. Sissoko ran uh, 27 kilometers again and um, had five shots and at least gave some of the kids in the in the third and second rows a chance to, to feel what a Premier League ball feels like because he wasn't aiming, aiming for goal. <laughs> but in any case, um, and I think actually Tottenham set up tactically very well for this game. Um, we knew that Arsenal was going to come at us and we scored on the counter. And then in the second half, we tried to do the same. Had a couple of decent chances, but the nerves just went there. We, we got in the final third pretty well. And then Son would try and dribble through a player and then leave the ball behind or just kick the ball. Or Harry Kane would randomly just fall on the ground. <laughs> well, I guess that uh, it's, it's a very mentally taxing sport, Linda. You never know when, when the breakdown will get to you. And sometimes, sometimes it just happens. But for me, that was definitely a penalty. Oh, wow. <laughs> for me, how <laughs> well, VAR did That's not VAR give that. How VAR did... No, no, I'm kidding. Um, it wasn't a pen. But then I think all in all, both teams deserve the draw. because Not because both teams were, were equally good. But I think both teams set up managerially and tactically equally awfully. Fair, yeah. I no, I actually think Pochettino uh, actually uh, played qu- well. Th- 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 set up his team quite well in the first half, as you said. But uh, yeah, like I said, I can't understand Emery's thinking um, because w- we're playing at home. You know, it's going to be an open game. Um, the North London derby always is. So why not put play two defensive midfielders and and put a creative midfielder in there, then you might score four or five. Because, of, of course, the, the first goal in this derby is, is always bloody important. And uh, what was so sad for me, I remember there was, I think it was two years ago, when you and I watched the the, 
the London Derby in the study centre at, uh, at, at Rez, and it was an absolutely insane game. I think it ended like 3 or, or also 2-2. Two, two. Very much, very much an open game and exciting stuff to watch. Um, and it's so sad for me that both managers just got their tactics horribly long and it ended up, ended up being a fist fight where no one really landed uh, a punch. There was no real... But I mean, there was, there was no real... Um, astonishing goal, like I said, had a very good um, finish for for Arsenal's first goal. Um, Tottenham were pro- probably lucky in the in the in the first goal with Baron Leno um, having a little carious moment, and then and, uh, and then Granit Xhaka having a carious moment. Yeah, gave th- and then Granit Xhaka gave the penalty away. Oh to, yeah, uh, I, I, I remember. I remember. Hugo I remember the, it was. I remember the, the brilliant assist from the one and only Matteo Guendouzi. Yeah, I remember. The, I remember, the, but the second Gindouzi. goal. As as David Luiz and um, the Arsenal um, defensive trio gave Tottenham a goal, Davis and Sanchez just decided to stop knowing how, the f- how to defend. And then um, um, Obama yeah, got in for his goal. But, um, but yeah, all in all, a uh, pretty fun Premier League weekend. Fun was had by all. It's going to be an international break now. Um, yes, Igor, uh, just before we go, uh, fun fact, um, we just had one time to give a shout out to Harry Kane, who joined um, two legends of Tottenham in Bobby Smith <coughs> with his 10th goal against Arsenal, um, equaling um, other two um, Tottenham legends for the most goals in this derby with Bobby Smith. Um, 10 goals against Arsenal between 1935 and 1964. And the GOAT, Adebayor, netting 8 times for Arsenal, but 2 times for Spurs. So, joins an elite club. Um, 10 goals for both those three players in derbies. Um, I know who's my pick for the best out of the three. It's Adebayor, but you make, you decide yourself, guys. But only one of, because only Adebayor played for Madrid. Exactly. <laughs> it was his form at Arsenal that got him there. Is, is less expected from him. Thanks, thanks everyone for <laughs> tuning in. It's going to be international break now. We're back in about a week and a half time. Um, if the international break is in- interesting, we might have a couple of beers and tell you guys about that. But if not, have a fun week, footballing fans. <laughs> <laughs>